Go ahead. Presenter notes, but uh, okay, yeah. So I'm giving this presentation for uh, Professor Paulo. Are you good? No, okay, sick. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm giving this prese uh, presentation for Professor Paulo for advanced public speaking, where we have to give a lecture. So uh, Professor Plato was nice enough to let me come in here and just kind of go over Hinduism since we're uh, fresh off the midterm and it's a kind of history based, so it's kind of easy to get into that. Um, yeah. So the three areas of my focus I was going to go over are history, tradition, and also talking about Gandhi just a little bit. Um, yeah, so gonna, since we talked about history today, I'm going to try and skirt through that just a little bit, just to, so we can, for sake of time and simplicity. Um, so yeah, the history, generally what I was going to go into is how India is a very uh, very highly populated area um, uh, that's surrounded by the sea and also by mountains on the outside. So it's very uh, it's a very fertile area, um, and it was discovered in about 25,000 BC when the Aryans came by and uh, realized, hey, we could, you know, really get into that and, and kind of push the other people out of there. So that worked really well for them. Um, also, TV series reference right there, subscribe to Foodie Pie. Um, yes. So yeah. Uh, Are they ahead, they by the way? In, do I? Are they ahead, by the way? They're getting there, I think. Okay. Pretty soon. This is one of the big issues of the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, forget about Trump. That's the big issue right yeah. now. Um, yeah, so as the Aryans came in, uh, they operate under a... Uh, uh, a warrior religion. So that as they would move on from group to group, they would kind of adapt and change their uh, their way of worship and their way of, of doing things. So when they came in, um, they kind of uh, developed the caste system, um, and that was kind of a significant uh, a significant adaption when they entered into that area. Um, but as uh, as they came um, along and did that, and the people started changing with it, they developed a uh, cycle of death and rebirth that we were talking about with uh, regeneration them. Um, hoping to achieve uh, uh, getting out of that process and just achieving, would that be Nirvana or would that be uh, different? Cause that's no. Okay. That's the, no. Not Nirvana then. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, in Islamic faders in the 8th century changed the perception of Hinduism in the area, especially uh, to traders coming into the area. This Muslim impact put Hinduism in an apparent minor role in the region. So when they, uh, um, as they, uh, Hinduism was kind of pushed underground because of this uh, new pressure from other religions and other uh, uh, outside forces, uh, such as uh, the Aryans, such as the Muslims, um, coming in, and they kind of like squashed um, Hinduism a little bit, so it was less of an apparent religion. Um, but then Christians came in and started to kind of preach to them, kind of give them a uh, uh, education. They started teaching them a little bit, um, and so they converted some people, but for the most part, it just kind of... Uh, just kind of opened their minds and let them um, realize that there were more things to think about. And that led to a uh, Hindu renaissance in the area. Um, and that kind of developed and grew into uh, recent times um, when they gained their independence in 1948, which was uh, something that uh, Gandhi uh, influenced as he came along. Um, so yeah, that leads us into the tradition of Hinduism uh, and their liter literature. We talked about the Vedas. Um, the word Veda uh, means knowledge. There are four main Vedas, uh, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, uh, Yajur Veda, and Atharva Athar Veda, um, compiled to create the Veda corpus. Um, they each contain different, uh, uh, different um, focuses, different emphasis. Um, the Atharva Veda, for example, uh, was a spell book. That one was, uh, um, it's considered to be um, a bit primitive because it's a spell book. It has a lot of like healing incantations and that kind of thing. Um, and the other ones have a little bit more uh, uh, more applicable knowledge. Um, yeah, so the Hindu gods that they get into, there are uh, three main gods that they have, um, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. You can see right there in the in that bottom picture, that's a screenshot from Indiana Jones. You know, like, you betrayed Shiva, <laughs> you know that bit, right? I remember that. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, so yeah, their gods are very uh, flexible in terms of. Uh, that goes in such historically accurate sourcing. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> put that on the on the wiki article. Um, uh, because they're uh, the gods are very um, flexible in terms of they've been influenced and have influenced uh, other things. So there's a lot of uh, shape shifting and different aspects of these. Um, when these three are combined, they form the uh, uh, the force that created the universe. Um, that's the, the belief for those three gods. So now talking about Gandhi, um, let me see if I can't remember the joke. I had it in the notes, I was going to read it, but now I just got to do it from memory. So, Gandhi walked around barefoot a lot, which gave him a very impressive set of calluses, right? 
He also had a very uh, a very sparse diet, so that gave him a very frail dis, uh, disposition and also um, bad breath. So this made Gandhi a super callous, fragile mystic hexed by halitosis. <laughs> yeah, great joke, great joke. Yeah, so Gandhi was born into a very devout Hindu family. He was the son of the first prime min- first prime prime minister, a prime minister, one or the other. Um, and yeah, according to uh, proper tradition, he was uh, in an arranged marriage at 13 to a girl that was 14. Um, they had a miscarriage and then uh, had four kids after that in the first um, yeah in the first year of marriage. I think there was some regret on his part towards the end of his life when he realized that uh, his wife was illiterate for her entire life. Um, which is something that he regretted, but uh, they had a generally happy marriage, I believe. Um, Yeah, so his family wanted him to become a judge and to become a uh, uh, a legal um, advocate in uh, in their hometown. Uh, He was he wasn't super interested in that. He was kind of uh, he was kind of just kind of doing it. So he did go to college. He went to London. Um, There he kind of uh, experienced new things and broadened his mind and did all kinds of. uh, all kinds of things that involved um, him joining a vegetarian society and a, uh, a kind of a thinker society. I forgot the, the name of it. Um, yes, yeah. Um, and then he, uh, yeah, he also read some uh, uh, scriptures, um, some of the Bible. Um, in that, he kind of uh, he developed all kinds of uh, um, thoughts and theories and ways on life. Um, yeah, on his way to go back home to develop his uh, law practice um, or to become a judge there. Um, he had an experience on a train where a man took him and kicked him out into the cold. He sat shivering at a uh, train station, I believe, um, just in the in the bitter cold and just sat there all night. Um, and that kind of uh, forced him into thinking about uh, his passion for social justice and nonviolence. Um, instead of uh, reacting in a, in a harsh way, he did that, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, so some final things. Uh, so he um, impacted um, he impacted uh, a lot of Indian thought and was uh, a very large advocate for the independence movement in India. Um, um, and he did that. He does does that uh, through his writings. Still, um, he has over I think two hundred articles and books written um, combined that can uh, that all kind of lead to his. Um, his belief on that, and then he also, uh, he had, I remember hearing this a long time ago, this little quote right here, if Christians would really live according to the teachings of Christ as found in the Bible, all of India would be Christian today, which kind of says that uh, um, he likes Christ, doesn't like Christians as much, because we can be hypocritical sometimes and not um, uh, not follow through on what we say we, we do, which is live like Christ and love like Christ. Um, so I think something that we could take away from that is just to uh, remember to um, live and love as Christ did um, because uh, if a man like Gandhi who had that kind of impact could see the positives of that we should be able to um, really live through and do that so that's all I got thank you very much Thank you.